very so I suppose that uh, no harm is done by uh, beginning uh, a couple of minutes early. So let me start by um, thanking the last speaker of the this session, Professor Enoki Sotakura from the Yukawa Institute of Theoretical Physics at Kyoto University. Um, so um, he um, will be talking about emergence of classical space science in canonical tensor models. Uh, again, a reminder to everybody, if you have questions, uh, uh, please um, uh, raise your hand using the participant feature. Um, so, Professor Sakura, that's uh, please begin at your convenience. Thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you very much for our introduction. Uh, could you, uh, do you uh, hear uh, my, my voice? So, is it fine? Yes. Okay. okay. Let me start. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers of this conference for this very nice opportunity. And um, today, I'd like to talk about the emergence of classical space times in canonical tensor model. So, let me start with uh, my background motivation. Uh, and uh, as you all know, quantum gravity is one of the most fundamental problems in physics, and uh, it is supposed to answer. Uh, questions like uh, how did the universe or space time get formed, or why does space time have the current form like one plus three dimensions or uniform, etc. Uh, there are a lot of approaches to quantum gravity, and uh, I'm mainly interested in the discrete approaches to quantum gravity. And um, in such a theory, um, space time is supposed to be made of fundamental building blocks. But um, uh, it seems very difficult for such a theory to get a global uniform space time. And uh, typically, um, such a theory will um, end up with an uh, ugly object like this. But on the other hand, maybe the uh, universe would be more uniform. So um, my strategy to um, try to um, solve this uh, mysterious question is that uh, uh, to assume the, uh, um, the um, intermediate stage of emergence of the uh, the symmetry. And uh, here I'd like to stress the importance of the um, abundance of the representations as well. Um, I'd like to explain the reason in a very simple example of uh, emergence of the two dimensional sphere. Uh, the symmetry which I would need would be the F of three and um, I want macroscopic space. Uh, so this means that um, you should be able to um, construct um, various localized functions. On it. Um, for that purpose, you would need um, a lot of spherical harmonic functions. And um, uh, as you know, these spherical, spherical harmonic functions are nothing but the uh, representations of SL3. So um, in this uh, um, simple example, you can uh, understand the importance of the uh, large number of representations of the group for the uh, emergence of the macroscopic space. And um, uh, here in this talk, I'd like to talk an example of this scenario. Uh, namely, I discuss uh, a wave function psi in a tensor model in canonical formalism, which we call canonical tensor model and CTM for short. The main messages of this talk are, first, uh, the psi p, uh, p is uh, one of the uh, variable, dynamic variables of the uh, of this, uh, CTM. And the psi p, the wave function, has peaks at the group symmetric p. p is actually a tensor. And, uh, but uh, this result is a little bit old, and it goes back to three years ago. And uh, what is new in this talk is the uh, uh, analysis of the uh, wave function in Q representation. Q here is a canonical conjugate variable of the, um, to, the, uh, to the P here. So this is just a Fourier transform of the uh, psi P. And um, in this um, uh, wave function, we can find a phase transition 
which um, uh, to the uh, fluctuating suppressed classical regime, when um, this Q is taken to be the group symmetric, and uh, the representation associated to it is you know, appropriate. So uh, in this region, uh, in fact, you can find a uh, regroup symmetric classical in in space times. So this is the uh, uh, main thing I want to talk in this uh, uh, in this uh, yeah talk in this talk. And um, uh, to before proceeding further, uh, I'd like to um, um, explain this uh, in picture. So uh, this wave function psi. Uh, has peaks at the group symmetric um, locations. So what I mean by that is uh, the following. Um, horizontal axis represents the um, configuration of P and uh, at some locations, the P is invariant under certain B groups. And uh, on that uh, locations, um, the uh, wave function has uh, peaks like that. On the other hand, in psi q, um, you can find uh, two phases like that. Uh, one is uh, um, uh, uh, one we call um, quantum phase, and the other classical phase. And uh, in that, uh, in the quantum um, phase, um, the uh, um, fluctuations of the angle variables are uh, um, large. And on the other hand, in the classical phase, um, this distribution split into um, two parts. And, and um, each of them has uh, small distributions. So uh, the, uh, the reason why I call this uh, classical phase comes from this uh, smallness of the distributions. And um, um, this looks familiar to um, people in matrix models because um, uh, this kind of transition from one bunch to uh, the uh, two, branch, two bunches of uh, eigenvalues um, is often uh, called um, uh, gross within what we have transition. Now I'd like to um, uh, show you the contents of this talk. Um, first, I'd like to talk about this psi p, um, the um, wave function in P representation. And uh, uh, this is an uh, old result, but uh, uh, I'd like to introduce it for the consistency of the talk. And uh, um, first, I'd like to uh, talk about the origin, why I want to consider this particular wave function. And I will just, uh, show you the uh, relation between P and D groups in uh, concrete examples. And um, actually, the mechanism behind is very easy to understand if we apply the, uh, uh, the um, uh, subtle point approximation. So I'd like to explain it uh, for your understanding. And then um, I move on to the uh, discussion of side Q. And uh, the, uh, unfortunately, I do not have any analytical way to analyze this, uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, wave function. And uh, I apply just the um, numerical method of Monte Carlo simulations to um, figure out the property of the uh, side Q. And then I will show the uh, transition uh, to exist. And, uh, uh, and then um, there are two phases. Um, one is quantum, and the other is uh, classical. And in this, uh, so um, and uh, um, certainly we find uh, some geometric objects in the classical phase. So th this is a reason in the title I say that uh, emergence of the classical geometries. And uh, I discuss some properties of this uh, transition. And uh, this is this my uh, uh, the contents. Uh, let me start with the discussion of the wave function in P representation. So the wave function has uh, this uh, particular form here, and uh, uh, the um, this uh, this is given by certain um, uh, integration form, and the uh, the integrand is uh, has, uh, has uh, this uh, exponential uh, form, and the exponent is given by um, uh, uh, cubic function multiplied by the imaginal unit right here. And the variables are the um, are replica of certain uh, um, end vector and the uh, phi chiba, which is just a variable. And uh, this number of the replica uh, has relation to the uh, uh, 
dimension n of this uh, vector variable. And uh, the measure is just the plot one. And uh, then the, uh, um, this, uh, this is just a, a cubic function of phi and phi tilde. And uh, this uh, uh, variable, the argument of the wave function um, um, comes into um, this uh, cubic function by this uh, uh, contraction between p and phi's. And the phi j square is uh, um, here is the shorthand notation for the um, self uh, in the product. And this is uh, not a totally new uh, I mean, um, system. Uh, I mean, the, there are some systems with similar structure. Uh, very, the most uh, similar um, model is uh, these things a model for spin glasses. And in this case, this Hamiltonian has uh, this form here. And uh, J here is random coupling. So, um, it, the fifth sense spherical model is uh, um, has some similarity with this first term, but we have also this uh, latter term, which plays uh, important roles in our case. Um, there is another model which is uh, similar, uh, but uh, in the case of uh, SYK model, which is very famous, right? Now, uh, isn't it? Uh, has, um, in the case of this model, the uh, uh, Dynamical variables are fermions rather than bosons in our case. Um, because, uh, oh, sorry. Because in our case, this uh, exponent is uh, um, a cubic function, um, this may be regarded as a certain um, multi variable extension of the area function. Uh, the reason why I want to consider this particular uh, wave function is that this is actually a solution to order Dweck equation for a tensor model. So the order Dweck equation is given by the um, the constraint equation for uh, for the um, from the Hamiltonian constraint of the CPM, and here Q hat and P hat are the uh, conjugate variables of the uh, CPM. Here, uh, an important thing is that this uh, um, this number here is determined uh, by the her hermeticity of this Hamiltonian constraint, and uh, because of this form, um, uh, the replica number here uh, is also in the wave function is also determined uh, determined like that. So you cannot change the replica number here uh, in the wave function. Um, in, um, uh, wave function, so you have to uh, keep uh, this number in the uh, wave function. And um, for um, um, explanation, I'd like to um, briefly mention what is CPM, and uh, it's a it's a ADMA-like tensor model. So the Hamiltonian Hamiltonian is given by a linear combination of uh, plus plus constraints. And uh, which, um, yeah, they they actually um, make um, formal closed nonlinear computation eligible. And because of the uh, uh, similarity to the ADM, ADM formalism, uh, there are some connections to general relativity uh, between classical CPM and general relativity. And uh, in the classical uh, N equal one case uh, of CTM, uh, it agrees with the municipal space approximation of general relativity. And um, or also, one can show that um, classical equation of P agrees with the Hamilton Jacob equation from GL in a certain um, formal continuum limit. Now, let me show you uh, how um, the emergence of the Lie group symmetries appear. And um, Psi P has peaks at Lie group symmetry P, like that. So, what I mean is that. Uh, uh, so uh, there, are, um, so the horizontal axis. Uh, let me assume that horizontal axis uh, represent the uh, barriers of the tensor P. And certain locations are invariant under um, uh, Lie group uh, like that. And R D represent the Lie group, and R represent its representations on P. And the, actually, uh, one can find explicitly that the wave function has peaks at such the group symmetric locations. 
Uh, the examples are uh, can be obtained by explicit numerical integration of the wave function. And in this example, um, the there exists um, SO6 invariant peak as well as some um, SO3 invariant rigids. And in this example, one can also find um, um, not only the uh, Euclidean one, but also Lorentzian type uh, symmetries. Uh, actually, uh, uh, the mechanism of the emergence of the symmetries is very easy to understand uh, by applying the subtle point approximation. Uh, so let me start, uh, let me um, write down the wave function in a general way. So the wave function is given by uh, certain int uh, integrations. And uh, here the uh, integrand is given by an exponential form. And uh, the exponent is given by um, um, a function of P and Z. Uh, P is uh, uh, the um, argument of the wave function and Z is the integration variables. And then uh, it, it is multiplied by another unit. So let me uh, apply the subtle point approximation. Then the wave function is given by a sum over um, the uh, sum over the um, subtle points. And uh, because um, in general uh, the phase factor uh, um, is not coherent, are not coherent uh, with each other. So therefore, um, the uh, the summation uh, cancel cancel easily and. Uh, so the, in general, this wave function does not take large values. But uh, on the other hand, suppose uh, P is tuned so that this uh, exponent is invariant under the group transformation of the integration variables. Then the subtle points exist on a group of it, uh, namely um, there exist a continuously infinite number of subtle points like that. So there is an abundance of subtle points. And also uh, what is uh, good for this case is that the exponent takes constant value along this phase orbit, uh, sorry, group orbit. Therefore, uh, the, um, the subtle point approximation is um, integration of, of uh, coherent contributions. So therefore this wave function may take a large value. So this is the uh, mechanism and uh, one can easily uh, expect that the, this phenomenon occurs in a very wide system. Uh, in our case, uh, the, what we have to uh, do uh, is to tune uh, P so that um, this is invariant under the group Z. And then uh, this uh, um, exponent is invariant under the group transformation of phi. So uh, this satisfies this, uh, this uh, invariant condition and therefore you can expect the, the appearance of a peak of the, uh, the function. Uh, one can or actually, uh, uh, sorry, let me show you the direction. Oh, sorry, let me go back. Actually, uh, there are other uh, variables here. So you can also include this uh, five children as a as the part of the transformation of the group. And then uh, what we find is that uh, Lorentzian type of the group symmetries, uh, symmetries and uh, then uh, you can actually find a pink pair. Now, uh, so uh, this is the end of uh, explanation of the uh, wave function psi p. And uh, let me go to the uh, discussion of the uh, wave function psi q. So the form of the psi p was like that here. And then uh, let us um, do the Fourier transform. Because uh, p appears linearly in the exponent, so what you get is just a product of data functions. And uh, there is a rest here. Um, but uh, um, Currently, I do not have any uh, analytical method to uh, deal with uh, this system. So therefore, uh, I'd like to apply the Monte Carlo simulation, but uh, this there's a functional form is not convenient for that purpose. Uh, by the way, um, this uh, um, what is imposed by this uh, the function is uh, called the tensor multiple conversion in applied mathematical physics. 
to handle uh, this uh, uh, um, this problem in Monte Carlo, uh, we multiply our regularization factor with the understanding of lambda, uh, of taking lambda to uh, infinity or large. So uh, we multiply here the um, wave function, uh, multiply here the regularization factor, which modifies a little bit the uh, definition of the uh, wave function psi q. Then what you obtain is just uh, the, um, the Gaussian form like that. And there is a rest of uh, them. So uh, what we do this computation is apply the Hamiltonian Monte Carlo method. Um, but uh, uh, as you might know, the, um, because of this uh, um, rest term, um, uh, the integrand is uh, um, complex numbers, so therefore um, um, you cannot, uh, I mean, uh, apply the uh, usual Monte Carlo simulation for that. Uh, namely, it contains the notorious sign problem. So uh, what do I uh, do is the uh, what is very well known as reweighting method. Uh, this is. Uh, um, uh, not uh, efficient uh, so much, but uh, um, as a first trial, uh, it will be a good uh, method because um, the method is very simple and naive. Um, so uh, let me explain the method. Um, so the, the, um, the idea is very simple, um, looking at the integration. So in our case, we have the real part and oscillating part. As I explained, the, um, we have this real part and the uh, oscillating part. And um, looking at this uh, form, you can easily recognize that this is nothing but the uh, computation of the expectation value uh, for the, in the system defined by this real part. So what we have to do is Monte Carlo with this real part and then and compute um, this oscillating part as expectation value like that. And in our case, uh, what we have to do is the following here. So we have the real part here uh, defined by this form. And uh, what we have to compute is this uh, um, oscillating part as expectation value. And then um, uh, what you recognize quickly is that this uh, integration over phi tilde is nothing but the definition of the every function. So the, what we have to do is this uh, um, computation of the product of every functions uh, in this uh, system defined by this uh, real uh, part. Um, a, a detail of the air function is uh, in here, which is taken to the asymptotically language lab. And, uh, I think it's, um, now uh, I uh, explained the setup and uh, what we have to do is uh, the compute this expectation value for the system itself um, by Monte Carlo uh, by putting um, the values of Q. Um, of course, I want to um, do this computation for every value of uh, Q, but um, of course it's a Monte Carlo and it's not possible to do this. Uh, so therefore I just choose cert certain value of Q and then um, this um, look at the um, perturbation uh, from it. So the um, Q naught uh, here, the center of the value is taken to be invariant under uh, some Lie groups. Here I have to specify some Lie groups. So um, just, I just consider the case of SO2 and SO3. And um, the, uh, I also consider a rebuilt deformation of the um, values of Q. Um, this uh, uh, gauge group are really uh, simple, but um, still we can expect uh, um, the emergence of um, some manifolds. And uh, in, this, in this case, we would expect SN, S2N, n dimensional uh, spheres to appear. So more precisely, I'd like to discuss, uh, I, I want to show you the construction of the, um, the center uh, invariant tensor. 
And um, for this purpose, I um, consider a set of uh, functions on S1 like that. Uh, this is the momentum zero function, momentum one, uh, momentum one, momentum uh, uh, blah, 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 and uh, momentum lambda. Lambda uh, is a set of, of, uh, of the momentum. And then uh, uh, consider um, triple product of these functions and uh, uh, integrate it over S1. I also uh, introduce a sort of a cut of regulator here, uh, which depends on this parameter alpha uh, to make the, a little, make the tensor a little bit more uh, general. And in the ethyl 3 case, um, this is also the same. And uh, I, what I prepare is a set of uh, spherical harmonics uh, starting from spin zero to spin lambda. And then um, consider the triple product and integrate it over S2 and introduce the regulator like that. Now, let me show you the, uh, um, the um, presence of the two phases. So um, what do we analyze is this uh, um, real part by Monte Carlo. And uh, Q is taken to be the group symmetric or it's in its vicinity. And um, one can, what, uh, um, and what we, you find is the two cases like that. So that uh, two phases can be characterized by the topology of the distributions of uh, phi i's. So um, you can uh, find uh, one phase here and the other phase like that by changing the parameters or uh, conditions. And um, uh, I'd like to call one phase uh, quantum phase be uh, because the fluctuations are um, broad. And on the other hand, in the classical phase, this distribution split into two bunches and uh, I'd like to call it classical phase because um, uh, the, um, the, the distribution of each in, of phi square in each bunch are small. So uh, as I uh, uh, suggested that this transition may be regarded as a tensor burden of similar transition in the context of matrix model, but with a little change. I will explain this change here. Um, the tradition in the matrix model is uh, that um, uh, one can do two cut solutions and also uh, often called cross weighting the other transition. So, the, uh, so the, uh, let me explain the, but still there, are, there is a difference and uh, let me explain this. In the matrix model case, uh, the, what is called tensor recognition is given by this one. And here EJ serves for the uh, eigenvalues of the matrix M. In the matrix model case, uh, what is distributing is the, um, uh, uh, the matrix M itself. So you can, and um, uh, if M is a given, then uh, eigenvalue is determined uniquely. So because of that, uh, we have the um, distribution of the matrix. So uh, eigenvalues distribute, we have the eigenvalue distribution. But in the case of the tensor case, uh, it's a little bit different. As I told you, this uh, tensor Q is a sort of um, given variable uh, because uh, what we are doing is, uh, oh, sorry, um, computation of the system of this uh, by, by Monte Carlo. Here Q is a kind of external variable in the sense of the, uh, uh, the Monte Carlo simulation. So Q is given. But uh, actually, uh, this tensor rank frequency part is, um, is, uh, has ambiguities. And therefore, uh, what you obtain is the distribution of the phi square. So, this is uh, uh, so what is uh, uh, distributing is uh, rather the tensor rank decomposition uh, uh, rather than this uh, um, tensor Q. This is the difference. But uh, the, from uh, surface, it looks very similar. Uh, the, the transitions looks very similar to the matrix counterpart. So now um, uh, let me um, show you the uh, actual multiple result for the transition. And uh, Q is uh, um, taken to the SO21. And uh, I set some parameters. 
And uh, the filtration looks uh, continuous under the change of lambda. This is not confirmed yet, but uh, it looks like that. Uh, now I want to take uh, change the parameter lambda uh, gradually from small value to large lambda. And at some point, um, the bunch separates into two pieces like that. Uh, for later uh, convenience, I'd like to call uh, this bunch uh, central center bunch and this one outer bunch. Uh, because uh, in the center bunch, the distance from the uh, origin is small. And on the other hand, this is uh, a little bit uh, away from the center. So I call it, uh, I named them uh, like that. So now uh, what I want to um, discuss here is the top, uh, the, um, the geometry, which may be defined by this outer, uh, the points out in the outer bunch. I mean, the, um, this each phi i, what i equal one to r, the record number, are any dimensional vectors, right? You have, uh, I have this uh, lower index, which runs from one to n. So, um, this uh, each phi i defines um, the any um, dimension vector, so you can uh, associate points, r points in this any uh, dimensional space. Actually, n is very large generally, um, the, like uh, twenty and one hundred and so on. So uh, it's uh, it, these points exist very uh, uh, very uh, scarcely. Uh, uh, yeah. And uh, so. Um, so now the uh, they are the uh, the points are separated in two uh, uh, classes. One is uh, uh, the center. Uh, one is included in the center bunch, and the other is included in the uh, outer bunch. So I want to discuss the geometric character of these uh, points in the outer bunch. So uh, the conclusion is that. Uh, in the classical phase, these fires in the outer, outer bunch form a geometric object. Um, S1, actually S1 for QSO2 and S2 for SO3 symmetric tensor Q. And uh, what I um, am doing here is that uh, uh, this is the case of the SO2 and uh, uh, you can uh, compute the distances between these uh, uh, points and uh, just to connect the points, the nearest the neighboring points, uh, points. So then what you obtain is the uh, uh, S1 like that. So you find that um, um, S1 is formed in this uh, case. Uh, this is uh, uh, quite non-trivial because the, um, uh, this is a, a very large uh, number uh, dimensional uh, space and uh, finding S1 it's uh, really um, constructed really difficult, but uh, still we can find this S1 uh, as a phase by this phase transition. And this is a case of the SO3 and um, now connect the nearest neighbors, then you can find this uh, here, uh, S2. So um, the um, points in the outer bunch is actually forming a um, geometric object. One can support uh, this conclusion by um, studying the Laplacian, constructing Laplacian uh, uh, for the points on the uh, on the in the on the um, in the outer bunch, and uh, like that. And uh, in the case of the SO2 symmetric uh, tensor, you can actually find this very regular uh, uh, spectra of the Laplacian. You can also do this for the SO3 case, and also uh, you can find very uh, good uh, spectra for the Laplacian. Now let me discuss the Monte Carlo sequence, and it is also interesting. Um, in the quantum phase, um, uh, the, uh, along the Monte Carlo sequence, uh, the fluctuation of the phi one square is quite uh, random, as we expect. Now the classical phase. In the classical phase, um, the fluctuation is very much limited like that. Um, one here is, uh, uh, has a distance from the center and uh, fluctuation is really small. And it, it, this is a, a um, point in the um, center bunch and uh, this, is, this is fluctuating, but also the distribution is very small. But at a certain point of Monte Carlo sequence, you find you can find a transition between the two, exchange of between the two. 
And so what is happening here is that, um, um, uh, let me suppose uh, uh, this point here uh, and suddenly moves to the central region like that, uh, like that, yeah. Then um, this uh, vacancy is immediately um, taken by a point in the center uh, bunch like that. So uh, the net effect of the geometry in the outer bunch uh, is, does not change, uh, fluctuate. I mean, it's uh, really classical um, from the point of view of the Monte Carlo sequence. Now let me discuss the region of quantum and classical regimes and uh, um, and the general conclu conclusion is that classical phases appear at large lambda and n. Now let me uh, discuss the analysis of the oscillator part of psi q. Uh, so far we have discussed only this part of the Monte Carlo simulation. Now I want to compute uh, this expectation value part. And um, uh, to do this, it's more convenient to scale um, to um, split the scale of the tensor Q. So um, I do this uh, separation, and this is the size, and this is the angular part. And then uh, what you have to do is this computation. And uh, what is different? Uh, in, uh, what is different here is that the um, lambda parameter here uh, was rescaled by um, Q. So uh, the um, this uh, parameter lambda uh, is now dependent on the size of the tensor Q. But for the purpose of the Monte Carlo simulation, the lambda uh, uh, um, is taken to be um, a constant uh, for the convenience, and uh, later I will in, uh, introduce, uh, get it back, uh, this dependence. Anyway, um, let me discuss the general property of this uh, expectation value. So what we can expect. So in quantum phase, um, this phi square fluctuates largely. So therefore, and um, you know that uh, I have shown the picture before, and, and the L function is uh, quite much oscillating. Therefore, um, in quantum phase, uh, this, there, um, in this computation of the exponential value, um, there are um, quite a large number of uh, cancellations. And therefore, on uh, this, uh, Expected expectation value takes small values in general. And this uh, cancellation becomes um, more and more serious uh, uh, by making uh, this uh, size of Q larger uh, because, uh, yeah, this appears in this uh, here like that. And on the other hand, in the classical phase, this uh, um, um, fluctuation of phi square is really suppressed. Therefore, um, the exit value remains uh, substantial even after uh, this uh, side of Q uh, takes uh, large and becomes larger. So, in this sense, uh, in uh, this, uh, the Q in the classical phase are selected as uh, this uh, um, size of Q becomes larger because um, the expectation value. Uh, the behavior of this uh, ex expectation of values is uh, like that. Uh, one can uh, actually check this um, um, expected aspect um, in Monte Carlo simulations. Uh, this is the plot of the um, result. And uh, as you can see the, from the uh, histogram that the, the alpha equal 0 0.2 case uh, here uh, correspond to the um, classical phase but not the others. And, uh, and um, you can see that the, uh, this is a point uh, plot for the uh, uh, wave function phase. And um, you can see very regular, uh, uh, pro uh, regular um, property. But, uh, when, uh, um, but on the other hand, in the outer side, um, here the, um, this phase is expected to be quantum. Uh, you see uh, many disturbances. And also the amplitude is also uh, showing um, expected uh, property uh, that the, for R5 0 0.2, the, psi, the um, amplitude remains large, but uh, in the quantum phase, it um, goes on very quickly. 
Um, this is uh, Laplacian, and uh, yeah, alpha equals zero point two uh, corresponds to F one of large size. This is uh, now I'd like to uh, discuss the uh, perturbation from the symmetric case. Um, here Z the perturbations, and uh, so we I want to break the symmetry of the tensor Q. And what we find it, it, uh, again is uh, is the um, importance of the invariance. And uh, uh, so you see here um, uh, for z equals zero, uh, the, uh, um, this uh, uh, wave function is uh, very um, clean. But on the other hand, in the um, uh, away from the origin, it seems that the um, the system is in the quantum phase and uh, the, the wave function um, sub is subject to uh, disturbances. And also, um, the amplitude is also uh, what I uh, what we expect and. Uh, at v equals zero, um, this remains uh, substantial, but uh, um, other than that, in, in the other region, um, this uh, decays very quickly. Um, now I'd like to uh, discuss the dependence on representations. So uh, in our um, construction of the invariant tensor, uh, I prepared um, and the functions from zero to a couple of lambda, the momentum. For example, in the SO2 case, we consider um, uh, a function with momentum zero to lambda on S1. And for the SO3 case, we consider spherical harmonics, which have spins uh, from zero to a couple of lambda. And um, now um, what, what happens if we drop some of them? And here in the, let me start with the SO2 case. And uh, I dropped here uh, P equals L, namely the constant function. Then it seems fine. The class clarity remains. But on the other hand, if we um, uh, drop in zero and one, then um, the class clarity is broken. Now the SO3 case, um, uh, the spin zero, dropping spin zero is, more uh, is uh, uh, serious, yeah. and uh, zero and one dropping zero and one is also serious. So um, in general, um, uh, what do we have is that uh, we have to prepare um, representation properly. Um, we have to do that, uh, and then um, then we can keep the class quality. But otherwise, the class quality will be destroyed. Uh, so far, I have assumed uh, I have shown the analysis for the constant uh, lambda, but now let me introduce uh, correctly the dependence on the size of Q. Then what happens is that um, so now the uh, the lambda is uh, Q dependent, and what happens is that at some at certain point of uh, Q, the quantum to classical transition occurs, and for symmetric. Uh, case uh, the uh, transition occurs uh, at smaller values of lambda. Therefore, the transition occurs um, in locations like that. So the uh, anyway, the, what I want to say is that the wave function remains substantial. But on the other hand, when uh, Q is taken from, uh, away from the symmetric case, the um, the transition does not occur so quickly. Therefore. The, um, the amplitude um, goes down continuously until uh, this transition point. Therefore, the, um, uh, the uh, wave function um, uh, becomes small uh, over, all, uh, over all the values of Q, uh, the size of Q. And also, um, away, very away from the um, symmetric Qs, um, I think um, there would be no transition or even other transition, and uh, I expect that um, the wave function become smaller again. So, um, in a sense, uh, the um, uh, in incorporating this uh, um, the dependence of lambda, we uh, uh, the um, there is a um, selection of Q in the class. Uh, uh, yeah, submit uh, in the, the selection of the symmetric Q. This is my uh, expectation, um, but still it's a speculation. So 
Uh, I mean, um, I, my analysis of the uh, Monte Carlo simulation is very much limited to the symmetric one, and uh, it's in, in the vicinity. So uh, this is a uh, speculation, but uh, this is what I want to expect. Okay. So uh, now let me uh, close my talk, and uh, I study the wave function psi q, and uh, uh, I um, find um, two phases: uh, one with quantum and one with classical for the group invariant tensor Q. And uh, we actually uh, um, observe uh, the um, um, emergence of uh, S n minus one dimensional uh, sphere for SON case. And uh, um, the transition looks uh, similar to the um, splitting transition of eigenvalue distributions in matrix models like uh, both with, with the transition. And uh, study some condition for classical phase. And uh, I, in the last, I have shown some speculation about the Q in classical phase uh, will be selected. Uh, there are um, many future problems. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for um, listening. Thank you very much for uh, the talk. Uh, we lasted this, in this long marathon, um, and um, I see that we are very few uh, left. But if there are any questions, uh, please uh, ask directly at this point. I mean, no need to pass through <clears throat> the raise hand. Many. I actually I have one question, and uh, the wave function that you selected is one of the solutions of the uh, wheeler david equation for your model, but there are other, right? The solution is not unique. So what selects it among the possible orders? I mean, you could have linear combination of exponentials with different signs, right? So. Um, yeah, this is a, a good question. And uh, uh, actually, um, we are not sure uh, how, uh, how much uh, this uh, uh, equation have uh, solutions. And uh, um, what we have right now is the, um, sorry, where is it? Is uh, just this solution, and uh, uh, for general and um, uh, n case, and uh, um, my um, expectation is that rather um, discussing the um, extension of the uh, wave function, I would um, like to extend the um, this uh, constraint system uh, given here. Um, to uh, make this uh, solution, make the solution um, uh, to be unique. So uh, actually uh, one can find um, many sets of um, consistency equations uh, for this uh, wave function, with this particular wave function. And uh, so um, in the, uh, this uh, constraint system is the um, uh, simplest one, uh, which I could uh, find, but uh, I, I, currently I know that um, there are a lot of um, um, cons uh, consistent um, constraints. Uh, one can add other constraints here. So, so um, I guess my guess is that um, once we find um, the uh, complete sets of uh, um, constraints, then the wave function can be uniquely um, obtained. Uh, so this is uh, my current uh, uh, hope uh, of this model. And um, yeah, so thank you very much for this link. Thank you. Okay, are there other questions? So I don't see others, so let's uh, thank uh, again uh, thank you for closing this intense uh, day of uh, uh, 
uh, talks and uh, thank you for all that uh, uh, follow them all. So at this point, I think I can, we can uh, leave and uh, uh, the talks will restart tomorrow with another chair um, at uh, 15, 10 uh, uh, universal time um, with talk by Sumit Das. Thank you to all and good